This is a cheap digital computer that literally fits in your pocket. It has a tiny screen and a keyboard, and you can find a bunch of interesting community-made firmware utilities, pen testing software, and even games for it. This new version now features an expansion bus on the back, and this new LoRa module turns it into a little standalone mesh-tastic device for communicating off-grid. This is Cardputer Advanced from M5 Stack. M5 Stack has kindly sent me one of their new card pewters. It's called ADV. I guess that's short for advanced. Anyway, let's take a look at the hardware of this thing. The original card pewter is a nifty little device. It has a built-in battery, SD card reader, microphone, speaker, built-in magnets on the back so that you can stick it to your fridge, and it even has a little infrared emitter, which you can use to control your TV and other devices. The brains of a card pewter is located in the top right corner and is actually a removable ESP32 chip. ESP32 is a kind of easily programmable microcontroller with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that can be found in many hobby as well as commercial products. M5 Stack, which is the company that manufactures card pewter, also makes many other devices that are intended to be used for Internet of Things projects and can be easily interfaced with each other. Through their software M5 Burner, we can find a bunch of community-made firmware options for the various devices, including card pewter. It can even play Doom. In some ways, this new card pewter has the potential to be a $30 alternative to the Flipper Zero or at least a very capable companion to it. There is even a completely ridiculous firmware for this with a ton of useful pen testing features that I'll get back to later. The big problem with card pewter so far has been its limited options for connecting external modules. While some modules are available through the connector on the side, if you wanted to connect a CC1101 chip for doing sub-gigahertz radio manipulation, you had to use an awkward SD card interface or disassemble and solder directly to the board. Not a very elegant solution. This is the new big feature of the advanced version of card pewter. This new expansion connector on the back. And the first module available for it is this LoRa and GPS module which simply snaps into place. And you can even secure it with a couple of screws if you want. The module extends a bit, tilting the device upwards, but it also makes it less pocketable. I would have preferred it to be aligned in a slimmer configuration. Besides the expansion connector, the new card pewter also comes with a bigger battery, a headphone jack, and an inertial measurement unit so that you can see if you're about to fall over in excitement. And it has a nice new white color. Because of some changes to the way the audio and keyboard input are handled on this new card pewter, you cannot run the old firmwares on this one. They have to be updated to be compatible. But let's take a look at some of the things we can run on this new one. Not only does the new card pewter support and is released along with a new LoRa module, there is also a new Mestastic firmware available. Mestastic is an open-source, off-grid messaging system that uses cheap, low-power, license-free digital radio transceivers known as LoRa, which is short for Long Range. When several of such devices running Mestastic is nearby, they form a mesh network, which can be used for locating devices or transmitting short text messages. Completely off-grid, without requiring Wi-Fi or cell phone data. Check out my other video for a deep dive into Mestastic. Most Mestastic devices do not have a keyboard, and some don't even have a screen. Instead, they rely on connecting to a phone through Bluetooth, which is running a Mestastic app that is used for setup and communication. But this card pewter Mestastic setup can be completely standalone. You can use M5 Burner to install the Mestastic firmware on your card pewter by connecting it to a computer through the USB-C connector on the side. Select card pewter on the left 
Scroll down until you find Mastastic and download and burn the firmware to your computer. Once it boots up, you have to select what region you are in. And I was quite confused at first, because no key on the keyboard seemed to do anything. It turns out you have to use the button on the top right of the card pewter to move the cursor to the frequency suitable for your region and select it using the OK button. I'm in Europe, so that's 868 MHz for me. Once you've selected the initial settings, you can now move through the various pages of information by pressing the top right button again. On each page you can press enter to open the menu for that section. You can start typing to create a new message at any time. By default it will be sent to everyone. To send the message to a specific device, press tab and use the top right button to scroll through scene devices. The GPS in this new module is quite fast at acquiring a fix, even indoors, and it automatically configures the local time. This green text version of Mistastic is called Base UI, and unfortunately it suffers from some limitations. Inputting text is extremely slow, not because of the keyboard, but because of the software response. And when you receive a message, you better read it instantly, because if another one arrives, any other messages are lost. There is no message history. If you really wanted a Mistastic standalone device with a keyboard, the LilyGo T-Deck Plus is probably a better option. This can run the new MUI, which is a full graphical touchscreen interface of Mistastic that not only is much faster at registering keyboard inputs, it also features a message history and even allow you to load a map of nearby devices. My absolute favorite firmware for Cardputer is called Evil Cardputer, and it's full of useful and interesting system administration and pen testing functionality. Evil Cardputer is a version of the Evil M5 project made by the other one, which is available for a bunch of different M5 stack products. But I think it really shines on the Cardputer. You can install Evil Cardputer through the M5 burner software. But to get all of the functionality, you will need a micro SD card with some files on it that you can find on the Evil M5 project GitHub in the folder named SD card file. Download these files and put them in a folder named Evil on your SD card. This firmware has so many features that it will take me all day to demonstrate them all. You can use it for doing common pen testing operations like Evil Portal, or to do deauthentication attacks and Wi Fi handshake collection to try and break Wi Fi passwords. Watch my video about how to do this with the Marauder firmware for a deep dive into this topic. But you can also do more advanced techniques when actually connected to a network, such as DHCP starvation attacks, DNS spoofing, creating a rogue DHCP server, you can run a responder like sniffing script detect insecure printers, and even find networked CCTV cameras. These tools are very useful for learning about and finding potential security issues on your own network. Do not use them on networks you do not have permission to test. It also has a bunch of useful network tools to do IP and port scanning on the network. It has an SSH client and it can even be set up as a reverse TCP tunnel into a network by connecting to a command and control server that you set up. You can also detect nearby flipper zeros or mess with Ponagotchi devices. The other one is constantly adding new cool features and this video is probably outdated as soon as I release it. So be sure to check out this firmware and the GitHub wiki for a full rundown of all its functionality. I've been showing you how to use M5 Burner to install firmware onto Cardputer, but it requires using a computer and connecting it through USB. But there is actually an even easier method for installing firmware. On M5 Burner you can find M5 Launcher for Cardputer. This is a bootloader that allows you to download and install any firmware file directly on your Cardputer without needing a computer. Once installed, it will display this green launcher text for a second every time you turn on your card pewter, and you can press the OK button to open the launcher interface. 
From here you can pick the OGA over the Air option, log into your local Wi-Fi and now you're presented with a list of available firmware files that you can either install directly or download to your SD card for later use. As you reboot your device, you will see the green launch a text again for a second. But if you don't press anything, it'll continue to launch into the installed firmware. Be aware that if you're trying to install Doom this way, you need to go into the launcher settings and select the Doom partition for it to work. Not all software has been updated to work with the new card computer as of the making of this video. Card computer is a very interesting, robust, little versatile device. While it might originally have been designed with the intent to be used in various hobby machines, robots and similar projects, I think M5 Stack has struck popularity with an unforeseen target audience. And this new card pewter is clearly catering towards this group of tinkerers who enjoys experimenting with Mistastic and Flipper Zero. It'll be very interesting to see how this new expansion bus is used in the future. I expect an obvious new addition would be a CC1101 module that would allow us to do sub gigahertz manipulation similar to what is possible with the Flipper Zero. There are already firmware options like Bruce that has a similar functionality. Thanks to M5 Stack for sending me this new card pewter to make this video. I hope I've given you a small insight into what this new card pewter is all about.